this video we're going to look at curve sketching and in particular we're going to look at, at sketching a cubic graph so a cubic graph is a bit more difficult than a quadratic because a quadratic would only have one turning point i.e a maximum or a minimum turning point whereas a cubic generally has got two turning points so it's going to be a bit, wee bit trickier so we're just going to get started now on how we do this example so the example says sketch the graph of y is equal to x cubed minus 5x squared minus 24x clearly indicating all point all important points and round to two decimal places if necessary. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is just write down our curve. So our curve is just going to be y is equal to x cubed minus 5x squared minus 24x. And what we're going to do is put x equal to 0. So this is so that we can find out where the curve crosses the y-axis. So if you put x equal to 0, you're going to have here, you're going to have 0, square, zero cubed minus 5 times 0 squared minus 24 times 0 which is very easy, is just zero. Now, every time you get a new coordinate, write it down. So we've got our first coordinate is zero, zero. So our graph, our curve, has to go through zero, zero. Next, we're going to find out where it crosses the x-axis. So we're going to put y equal to zero. So that means zero is equal to x cubed minus 5x squared minus 24x. And here, we factorize this as best as we can. So we're going to pull an x out, first of all, giving you x upon x squared minus 5x minus 24. Now this can factorize again, the, this bracket could factorize uh, to be x squared, um, sorry the minus 5, oh, sorry, I'll do my sum and product over here, my sum is minus 5, my product is minus 24 and my two numbers will be minus 8 and 3. So x squared minus 8x plus 3x, that's a 3 believe it or not, 3x minus 24. Okay, now we're going to factorize. We've got x upon, and then there's a bracket of x minus 8, and then plus 3 upon x minus 8. So I know I'm on the right track because I've got the same common bracket. So write this out again. We're going to change this to x minus 8, the common bracket, and then x plus 3. Okay, we've got three things. Lovely state uh, position of mathematics. You've got three things multiplying together. x times x minus 8 times x plus 3. And the, the product is equal to zero. So this can only be, mean that either the first one's equal to zero, the second one's equal to zero, or the third one's equal to zero. So that means x is equal to zero. It means x minus eight is equal to zero, which means x equals eight. Or it means x plus three is equal to zero, which means x is equal to minus three. So again, we've got three points. Let's write them down. Zero, zero, eight, zero, and minus three, zero. Now notice uh, you've got your zero zero twice really, but that's just it just happened to be that it crosses at the origin, and that's where both x is equal to zero and y is equal to zero. But just I was there's nothing I would do differently about this working out. I would do it exactly as I have. Okay, we're going to go on now, and we're going to find the maximum or minimum point. And I, we are predicting there's going to be one of each. So to do this, we're going to have to find dy by dx. So if you differentiate first of all, you're going to get three x squared minus ten x minus 24 and then we're going to put your dy by dx equal to zero now remember the reason for this is at a turning point so a maximum or a minimum your gradient is equal to zero so that's we're going to be putting that equal to zero so zero is equal to 3x squared minus 10x minus 24. now i am going to just jump to the quadratic formula for this and i'm going to say that's going to be equal to 10 plus or minus x is going to be equal to 10 plus or minus the square root of minus 10 squared minus 4 times 3 times minus 24 just squeeze that in and no more and all divided by my 2a so that's 2 times the 3 and I would always write a line in where I've tidied that up that's going to be 10 plus or minus the square root and if you do minus 10 squared minus uh, what does that say minus 4 times 3 times minus 24 you will get 388 and that's all being divided by six okay so my two x values worked out to be and i'm just copying this from work i had done earlier on uh, so i've gone to four decimal places uh 4.9496 and x is equal to minus 1.6163 okay after that you've got to find the corresponding y value so i'm going to say when x is equal to 4.9496 y is equal to and I haven't shown my working out, but you would just put this x 
back into this equation to find your y. And I find my y to be minus 120.0251. I will do, whoop, I'll do the same one over here. I'll do the same idea. I'll do the y's at this stage. So sorry, when x is equal to minus 1.6163, your y is equal to 21.5066. Okay, so we've got the two coordinates. We don't really know if they're maximum or minimum, so we use our testing function. And remember, our testing function is the second derivative, dty by dx squared. So differentiate your dy by dx to get dty by dx squared, and you're going to get 6x minus 10. And I'll scoot down a wee bit here and see a wee bit more room. I've got loads of it, so I'll say when x is equal to 4.9496, your d2y by dx squared is going to be, so 4 times the 6, four, sorry, 6 times the 4.9 is definitely going to be bigger than the 10, so 6 times this and minus 10 is going to be greater than 0, and we don't really care what it is, but we just want to know if it's positive, so that tells you that your point, and I will go to two decimal places, as I had said in the question, 4.9 Nine five and then minus 120.03 is and because d2y by d2y squared was greater than zero it's going to be a minimum point so minimum turning point minimum turning point okay uh, over here same idea for this one I'm just going to write my d2y by dx squared again it was 6x minus 10 hasn't taken me any length of time to write that out again. Just write that out again, just so it's really clear what you're doing. And then we say when x is equal to minus 1.6163, your d2y by dx squared, let's just think about it, 6 times a negative will give you a negative, and then minus another 10 is definitely going to give you a negative, so it's going to be less than 0, which tells you that your point and give it give your coordinate to two decimal places remember which is minus 1.62 and then it's going to be 21.51 is a maximum turning point and that's it okay right we've got well we've I haven't got well, we've got I haven't got just as many points as we would normally have because this this one the zero zero and the zero zero repeated itself so we've got 0, 0, 8, 0, minus 3, 0, and then we've got these two maximum minimum turning points. So we're going to plot those. So I'm just going to mark those onto the graph now, and then we will show how we draw the thing. Okay, we've got our points marked on. We had our minus 3, 0. We had the origin, 0, 0. We had 8, 0. And then we had um, a minimum turning point, which was at 4.95 and minus 120, 0, 3. And we had a maximum turning point, which was at minus 1.62 and then 21.51. So we're going to go ahead now. I'm going to draw this graph. And then I will talk to you about the last thing. Okay, you can see I've drawn my graph. It's not brilliant, but it's okay. And you can see I've got my maximum turning point here labeled. Uh, my minimum turning point here. And you can see I've got the coordinates of it as well. Uh, it's just a very rough sketch. Clearly, the distance here is not once, roughly one-sixth of this distance. It is just a sketch. You're just plotting the key points, uh, where it crosses the x-axis, where it crosses the y-axis, any turning points, and you've got the general shape. The one last thing I have to do is just label my graph and use whatever way they've given it at the start, and they give it as y is equal to x cubed minus 5x squared minus 24x. Okay, folks, you're now ready to do exercise 8D.